Hey YouTube, Copper San here. Today we're going to look at 10 classes that are just amazing at bossing. So if you're looking into bossing mules, these classes could be something to look into. This video is by no means a top 10 list and classes are shown in random order. Probably almost every class can one shot a boss if you put enough effort and funding into them. I've seen ice lightning mages, heck I've even seen bishops melt through bosses. So anything is possible if you're just funded enough. But I do feel that these 10 classes offer a ton of tools, especially designed to take down bosses, while also having survivability and other tricks up their sleeves. We're starting this list off with the Explorer Hero, a class that is designed to defeat bosses. Heroes are short-ranged warriors that specialize in swinging their sword really fast, actually so fast that the heat generated from their swings tears holes in the space-time continuum. Heroes grow stronger the more combo orbs they have, those uh, little balls floating around them, and that's where their biggest strength lies. You see, heroes get absurd amounts of fire final damage with just their combos charged. This final damage bonus goes up to 142% on my hero. If I use my skill Enrage that lowers the amount of monsters I can hit, this final damage boost goes up even further to 203%. So that's usually what I have when I'm bossing. So let's say my hero was doing 100 million damage lines before I charged my combos and used Enrage. It would now be doing a massive 303 million final damage. That's insane. But wait, there's more! If I use the 5th job attack World Weaver and charge up my combos again, for a short time this final damage bonus goes up to 302%. So the amount of damage this class can do is insane. This makes it a lot easier for the hero to take on bosses with a lot less funding than some other classes. And actually, that's just the final damage part. The more combos you have as a hero, the more boss damage they get as well, thanks to their passive hyper skill. And they have a very short 20 second cooldown iframe with their World Weaver skill, that same one that increases your final damage. Iframe or invincibility frames are moments where your character cannot get hit. Perfect for dodging those pesky boss attacks. Heroes can also leave debuffs on enemies and they have passive self-healing but that isn't that amazing to be honest. <laughs> also I just realized my Kragir is about to expire. Another warrior class that is just amazing at bossing without requiring a lot of funding is Adele. While heroes bossing is very straightforward, Adele's bossing does require a bit more attention. Adele can summon her Aetheral Swords that help her deal more damage and she has to keep up a buff that boosts her final damage and ignore enemy defense by dashing to crystals every now and then. Adele can do a ton of damage to boss monsters mainly thanks to her fifth job skills which don't have any boost against boss monsters naturally but it simply said just does a lot of damage. <laughs> Adele also has a lot of mobility in her kit. She can backdash midair and stay suspended in the air for a while which can be useful during some boss fights like with Lotus. She also has two different iframes and one of those skills works similar to Mihil's Royal Guard, where Adele counters an attack to gain a few seconds of invincibility. And even more importantly, she has a bind, which stops boss monsters dead in their tracks for a couple of seconds, making it a lot easier to rebuff or of course to deal a ton of damage with your burst without having to worry about dying. Adele's can also mark enemies, lowering their defense and increasing the damage dealt against them. And they can use skills like Noble Summons and Aether Bloom for additional damage when their 5th job skills are on cooldown. Similar to the hero class, Adele has passive healing as well, but she heals 4% of her HP and MP every 5 seconds, unlike the hero's flat value, so that's actually pretty good. So another great bossing class with plenty of tools to take down bosses and survive the fight, but this class does require a bit more micromanagement than the hero. Another OG bossing class is the Explorer Dual Blader. This Steve class specializes in ignoring enemy defense. Defense. Since bosses have a lot of defense, other classes might struggle with upping the stat, but not this class. I don't have a lot of funding on most of the characters on this list, so I cannot show some really sick one-shots unfortunately. So my favorite boss, Balrog, is gonna be my victim for most of this video. Dual Blader's 4 job skills, Blade Fury, already passively ignores 20% defense and their Phantom Blow skill 30%, which can be increased even more with their passive hyper skills. Their 5th job skills all passively ignore enemy defense as well, with skills like Tempest Blade and Blade Tornado even ignoring 100% of the enemy defense. But all those ignore enemy defense bonuses are just the beginning of their strengths. Dual Bladers also have advanced the Dark Side. There is a chance for Dark Side to trigger when attacked and to stay in Dark Side when attacking. Being in Dark Side doesn't only dodge the breeze, which is amazing during some boss fights, it also increases Dual Blade's final damage. And thanks to their Shadow Mat skill, this class has an additional chance to dodge for attacks, and when an attack is successfully dodged, all hits will become critical hits. This effect lasts for 7 seconds and has a 5 second cooldown, so technically, if you keep dodging, this buff will stay up forever. 
And as Icing on the Cake, this class also has a recovery skill. Thanks to their life drain, every attack has a 10% chance to recover a whooping 20% HP. Together with 2 invincibility frames and 90% knockback resistance, this class is a formidable bosser. Actually, there is some extra Icing on the Cake, but that's poisonous. This class also poisons enemies with their attacks, dealing damage over time, and they can summon a mirror target to distract bosses. Topped it off with amazing mobility and a flashbang grenade that can debuff enemies, and I think this cake is finally complete. It tastes delicious, but it's very deadly for any boss monster that tries to take a bite. It's usually pretty easy to see for all the classes what their intended purpose is, bossing, mobbing or support. And then there are newer classes like Hoyong, whose intended purpose is to blow up everything that's in its way. Regular monster or boss monster, doesn't matter. Hoyong's lines are dummy thick. He doesn't have a lot of boss damage, final damage or ignore defense. He just does a lot of lines of damage. Combine this with excellent mobility, warp gates, two iframes and a ton of burst, there is nothing that this class cannot defeat. He doesn't even require that much funding either. Out of all classes on the list, this class is the one that has the most attacks and buffs to manage. But to skilled Hoyong mains, this will feel like second nature. Some of his attacks deal a little bit of increased damage against bosses and thanks to his passive hyper skills also ignore a portion of the enemy defense. Hoyong is a burst class, using his fifth job skills to create additional clones to deal more damage or summon a massive tiger. And his Rattle the God skill doubles as a buff that unleashes an attack every 12 attacks. And this skill can be used again for a massive amount of burst. While perhaps not easy for everyone to get into, this class will melt any boss. Speaking of melting bosses, there is one other class that can literally melt through any boss, the Fire Poison Mage. Not the most popular of classes, the amount of damage this class can dish out with minimum funding is absolutely insane. Fire Poison Mages are all about damage over time. They can set monsters, the ground and even the world on fire with their attacks. Their main attack paralyzes, stuns monsters and leaves them on fire and they can summon poison mist that deals damage over time and that can then be exploded for an insane amount of lines of damage and it ignores a portion of the enemy defense as well. Thanks to their fervent drain skill, this class gains additional final damage depending on the amount of damage over time stacks they have, which they have a lot, which is further increased when they attack an enemy that is stunned, frozen or paralyzed. They get another massive boost of 40% final damage coming from the third job elemental decree skill and you can top that off with another 70% final damage boost from infinity and you'll get a mean boss killing machine. The infinity skill is quite important to make that happen, so increased buff duration is actually quite important for this class. Fire Poison Mage is their fifth job skills complement their damage over time stacking as well with skills like DOT Punisher dealing more damage depending on the amount of damage over time sources you have and their skill Elemental Fury's duration is increased by the amount of damage over time stacks as well. The end result is a lot of damage against single targets but this is somewhat as a trade-off as this class has no innate bind skill or invincibility frame. The common fifth job skill Ethereal Form can help with some survivability though. Another class that suffers from the same sort of skill mix, lots of damage but lack of survivability is the Night Lord. This class exceeds at single target damage, throwing an insane amount of throwing stars at enemies. They can even add explosive charms to their throwing stars for even more damage. Their throwing star barrage skill makes them throw stars in three additional directions. If you're close enough to a boss monster, that means a gazillion hits. And it just so happens that Night Lords have this funny skill called Assassin's Mark that gives them a chance to pop out an additional throwing star when they attack an enemy. Combine that with the already insane amount of lines that they already do, and you'll get one of the best burst classes in the game. Similar to Hero, this class is pretty simple to play. The trick with Night Lords is staying alive between your bursts. They only have a flash jump to jump away from attacks, they do have high avoidability and they can dodge Thunder Breeze with Dark Side, but they have quite low HP so it can be quite a challenge to survive. But the damage surely pays off. And then there's also Night Lord's little cousin, that guy that's really into bats, the Night Walker. This class is very similar to Night Lords, except that it's Halloween and they're dressed as Batman. Night Walkers can apply stacks of darkness on enemies, increasing their defense ignored per stack. Night Walkers also really like to jump attack, gaining increased final damage when they're using throwing star attacks up in the air. Similar to Night Lords, they're focused heavily on burst damage, but trade off some of their damage for more survivability and tools to actually survive boss fights. For starters, Night Walkers have a bind, making it a lot safer to apply your burst. They have a passive revive that also doubles as an iframe when it's used and their hyperskill Dominion doubles as an iframe as well. Unlike Night Lords, no stars pop out when a Night Walker attacks. Instead, they have a chance to summon a bat that deals damage, bounces around enemies and heals them for a portion of their health. And they also have the Dark Side skill to avoid the breeze during boss fights, of course. It's a fun class with a bit more versatility than its Explorer counterpart, but with a little bit less burst as well. 
The next class on this list is the Demon Slayer, a familiar face for most of our viewers here. Demon Slayers can dash, glide, rush, teleport and double jump, giving them a ton of mobility that most other warrior classes are lacking. They have a whooping 3 invincibility frames and one of those is on a relatively short 30 second cooldown and then there also is a bind to stop bosses in their tracks for a couple of seconds. So there definitely are plenty of tools for the Demon Slayer to work with. What makes this class even more amazing is their bossing skill Demon Impact, which not only always crits but also ignores a portion of the enemy defense and has increased damage against boss monsters. It's like the whole package in one. And their fake job skills are just as amazing for defeating bosses, with all their fake job skills having passive ignore enemy defense bonus stats and their empowered regular attack deals increased damage against bosses as well when Demon Awakening is active. They have passive healing and can heal themselves with their iframe skill as well, those birdies. With their Demon Cry they can debuff enemies reducing attack, defense and accuracy all the while increasing their EXP and item drop rate. I personally really like bossing with this class, that's also why I decided to main it in the Luna server. Next up is the Flora Pirate Arc, with very few buffs to manage, high mobility, a ton of base damage and really nice burst, this class will feel very powerful without much funding. While this class can also dish out some mean damage, it does have a higher difficulty to play, as his amazing mobility is also his curse. Attacks can be animation cancelled to stop Arc from moving, but messing this up would spell certain doom at some bosses, so it does require some practice. When Ark is transformed, the fun really begins. He can deal massive damage with his hyper skills and fifth job skills and his spell bullets will only add to his already high base damage. The burst from his fifth job skill, Endless Starving Beast and Abyssal Recall is also insane. And his two iframes and bind make him a very decent bosser that can easily take on most bosses, but it does have a steeper learning curve compared to some other classes. The final class on this list isn't a burst DPS supportive tank mage Kana, but instead I wanted to give this spot to MapleStory's newest class, Kane. Kane is an archer and assassin in one, dealing damage from afar and marking his enemies only to dash in, go for the kill, pop his marks for an insane amount of damage and quickly dash out of harm's way again. Kane's marks enemies with his empowered attacks, which by the way already have quite high base damage. He can then use up the mark which activates an attack, dealing additional damage. Kane wants to continuously apply marks and pop them for some consistent burst if that's the thing. <laughs> like most newer classes, Kane's strength doesn't lie in his high boss damage or ignore defense, he just does a lot of damage very fast and his struggle skills help him deal even more damage with his already powerful attacks. Kane has two iframes from his own skills with one being on a low 40 second cooldown. His playstyle is a bit risky and he isn't very tanky. Going in for the kill to pop your marks must be timed properly and he has to continuously boost up his attacks which do require a bit more attention but this will feel like second nature for most Kane mains. And there are 10 classes that are amazing at bossing. Which class would you recommend yourself as well? Let me know in the comments. And as always, many thanks to our members for making this video possible. Thanks to Niels de Comic, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, FLX, Riley Oz, Terry Kim, Varese, Dries Sumker, Wiley, Francisco Sousa, History Cannon, Backspace OTI, Simak, Safronex, Lonzo BG Extremes, Anwar NHI, Brandon, Frank Bouguet, Ziggy Deer, Flidiot, Beamer WT, Knife Sue, Chen125, Cloudfix, Gusus Rodriguez, SirQQ Morse, Froggy11, Surtito655, Grayson Lee, Riser RU, Brandon Cam, Vinra, Bruno H, Trevor, Yuki436, Afterlord and Score MS, Sinfolito, Retheus, John Mann, Lucky Beats, Justin Vale, Silvio Nato, Stevie Zhang, Iruski TV, Sauli Shinauda, Heopan, Tuzira, Joshua Alvarez, Striker Elk, and Nock MSS. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay safe and happy mapling.